this example will apply. So I am going to draw just a bow. Let's will this whole thing fit on the page? Eh, it's a little too big. Let's use my coffee cup instead. And I'll kind of follow that shape mostly and finish drawing it in. So here's a bow which we've drawn back. And I'm going to count the squares two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. So two, four, six, eight would be the middle. Okay. And we'll draw our bow string. Now, depending on how you're building your bow, it might work a little bit differently. In an actual bow, you know, like if you were Katniss Everdeen, if you were Merida, and you had a bow, the bow itself, not the string, is the thing that stores potential energy because the bow flexes, right? When you draw this bow back from its original shape, I'll draw a dotted line to show the bow's original shape. When you draw that bow back from its original shape, the bow stretches. The bow itself is a spring. It stretches and stores energy. And you draw it back and you have an arrow in here. Okay, like this. And when you release or loose the arrow, when you loose, which means to release the bowstring and let the arrow fly, it lets all this potential energy stored in the stretched bow turns it into kinetic energy, which drives that arrow forward. So what are the forces acting on that arrow? What are the forces? Where does the force even come from? Well, the force comes from the bow being stretched out. And in which direction does it pull? Well, it pulls the direction that the string is going. So let's draw those forces on here. Let's just make them cool colors so we can see them. All right, so here's one force right there in purple. And let's draw another one here in orangish red. And these are forces applied by the bow. And let's just call them force one and force two. I just want to focus on the bow. We, we know that there's gravity involved. There's gravity pulling down on the arrow, but we can leave that out for right now. How do we know what the net force is? Well, what is the net force? Can you explain that to me, Caleb? Since this is your example, who else is doing a bow? Haley is doing a bow. What, what, what is net force? What does that even mean? Trying to think, net force. Can somebody help us out? What does net force mean? What is net force? Andres says all the forces. Yeah, what do we do with all the forces to figure out net force? What do we do with all the forces? You add them, Karen, exactly. You add together all the forces. So in order to do that, we add together the magnitude and the direction. But what, what do we do when forces aren't pointing 
in perfectly up and down or perfectly left and right directions. They're not exactly vertical and they're not exactly horizontal. Well, we have to think about them in terms of vertical and horizontal. So this force one, this F1, it's diagonal, right? But what does that diagonal mean? It's a little bit up. So how much up is it? Let's think about it like a right triangle. So we can split this force into its up and down component and it's left and right component. So let's draw this right triangle and then count the squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm gonna write eight up, okay? And then what about to the left? It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten to the left. And this is actually symmetrical. So we know that force two is eight down and 10 left. Now we can add those together. First, let's add the up and down. If this is eight up, if we were doing this on a graph, is up positive or is up negative? It's positive, and so down must be negative, right? So this means eight, and this means negative eight. So what happens when we add eight and negative eight? It's zero, exactly. So that means that there's no up or down. This arrow is not gonna go up, it's not gonna go down, it's gonna be propelled in an exactly horizontal direction, exactly this horizontal direction. So now let's add together the left and right. On a graph, is going to the left negative or positive? Think about it. If you're moving to the left from the origin, you start at, you're on a graph and you start at zero, zero, and you go 10 to the left, yeah, it's negative, exactly. So this is negative 10 and this is negative 10. Well, what happens when we add negative 10 and negative 10? Negative 20, yeah, very good. Yes, good job. So we know then that our net force is actually negative 20 or 20 to the left, one, two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20. And we can draw that here in whatever color we want. And that is our net force. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that it helped you with your free body diagrams and your understanding of the concept of net force. If you have any comments or any other videos that you'd like to see, any lessons you'd like to see short videos on, please leave a comment below. Um, if this video helped you at all, click that thumbs up, click the like button and subscribe to this channel to get alerts whenever we post new videos, either tutorials or helpful lessons to help you through some of this science. Um, thank you and uh, happy learning.